Okay, greetings brothers and sisters. Just want to do a kind of introductory thing. I usually don't do that for this channel, but just some thoughts about the natures of being a truther and being in the so-called truth community. I'm going to co cover Puff Daddy or P. Diddy or Sean Combs <laughs> in a moment. Um, somebody sent me a great All That video. Uh, I guess that was a Nickelodeon kids show, probably by that dude that's now being investigated himself that disgraced uh, whatever uh, that guy's name is. The documentary that just came out about that guy. And the thing with, um, you know, the uh, Kate Middleton. You know, my wife and I were talking about this yesterday, and the um, thing about it is, it seems like they did a deep fake video. You know, I talked about this years ago. It was maybe the Bill Clinton, I could call it the Bill Clinton effect. When he got caught cheating on his wife at his job as president in the Oval Office with an 18-year-old intern, and that's a scandal that would have end, ended anybody's presidency. And then he got caught lying about it. And he perjured himself, which was a you know, felony. And he should have resigned, but he didn't. He just said, I'm not going to do it. It was like um, the Smith character in Matrix, when he was destroyed, refused to die. He said, I knew what I was supposed to do, I just didn't do it. And that's what Bill Clinton did. And I don't know if that happened before that but it's also what Trump did you know when they were trying to get rid of Trump and they had all this stuff on him and you know they impeached him and all these things and there just isn't any sense of accountability anymore unless you admit to what you're doing what you did like say Louis CK admitted to the things he was accused of doing and other than that they you know you could just not disappear, right? Refuse to accept any sort of consequences for your actions unless they put you in jail, which is very rare, right? We'll get into this with P. Diddy Combs in a bit. But, you know, they have something on everybody. And people just don't have any sense of, like, personal shame anymore. Like, you used to live in a village, and if you acted out in a certain way, or a tribe, you would be shunned. You know, the Native Americans, there was this Native American tribe, They would the woman would leave your moccasins outside the teepee, and that meant you were done. You had to leave the whole village, like, you know. But, you know, you had to do something pretty severe for that to happen or whatever. You know, like something like that, right? But where the village and the family and, you know, everyone would be embarrassed and shamed by your behavior. Like, not just you, but your, like, whole family. And places that still live under that pressure it inhibits people from taking chances and doing things and so it's not like the the best thing either but at least there was some accountability right but there just isn't that anymore and you can easily more easily be caught by the internet the internet's great at catching you with doing things because it's so many people and there's so much evidence but now video videotape you know videos are no longer concrete evidence because it could be faked and you just have to stick to your lie or just not talk at all and disappear you know I talked about how Jimmy Kimmel got caught you know all these old videos surfaced of him being misogynistic you know he's supposed to be this liberal feminist and him being misogynistic with women in that crappy show the man show and then he did blackface with Oprah Winfrey and Carl Malone and really I mean, he went all in really disrespectful way he went on vacation for three months and came back and other things had happened and been forgotten. They weren't out to get him. You know, he's sort of a gatekeeper. He was going in hard on Trump, so he was allowed to continue, right? But what he did was more severe than, say, Louis C.K., but he just didn't own up to it, or more severe than what Ellen did. And so as long as you don't engage with the process, you don't admit to doing any wrongdoing, or you don't, you know, you don't talk about it and you just ignore it and pretend it didn't happen eventually the thing will go away and there's no sense of you know people doing anything there may be a boycott like at Bud, Bud Light but that doesn't last long you know they did some brand uh, management 
but it's kept people from having any consequences at least now in this particular you know whatever the consequences are there they're minimal for most people like sometimes you're not famous anymore that seems to be like the big consequence but for politicians one side says you're the worst person in the world the other side says you're the greatest like with trump and then it's whatever they do whether they rig the election whether you know whatever happens i mean like i said i'll be shocked if trump every trump or hunter biden or any of these people ever do any severe uh time or anything like that right and so it's almost pointless what we're doing here in that sense um in terms of accountability like there was a sense that the truth community would expose people in ways that the mainstream media wouldn't do but with all this stuff with deep fake i mean think about the royal family they just have this deep fake technology and the first opportunity they have to use it they use it you know which is classic royal family you know the firm kind of thing right they'll just you know they always do things like this like they can't wait to use the new the latest new newest technology in lying right but if they get caught doing it what difference does it make like the people who are royalists will you know continue to be that and they'll worry about kate middleton they'll comment about what a mean person you are right you know if you say anything and the rest of the people already are you know anti-royal you know it just doesn't matter there's no consequences and with p diddy you know with sean combs um he's been doing bad things for whatever time right he's been a scummy person and why now like why is he being burned now like did he piss somebody off what did he do wrong you know what what happened that he's being served up right like that's the, you know the only time is when somebody's done something and they you know there's real consequences from people who have real power over these kind of things but those people themselves have you know limited power materialistic power but they're suffering the the, the effects of the divine consequences right and you know in my understanding of this from the Sajmark meditation that I do that um philosophy you know these ideas of samskaras that everything's accounted for like everything that you do think and say is accounted for and so you don't get away with anything if it's not now it's in a future existence but you're always going to there's always going to be a reaction you're suffering now from things you did in a past life say you know people are suffering now a lot of things that you know people whine about now like they're they're born victims right you know like whatever it might be happens because they're done something in a previous existence and like they feel like they're screwed and you know they you know but they came in in a bad situation but it's they created that in a few in a pre previous existence right there the need for something not that they're being punished but there are consequences for your behavior right they you know there's a there's a reaction to your actions and when i started to think about it that way in terms of being like in the truth community because so many people in the truth community have this idea that you know they're out to i mean it's waking everybody else up or you know getting justice and you know, you're not going to get that there's no justice in the system anymore you're not going to expose some information what it's allowed for the truth community is to see that everything has been compromised like everything is demonic in our system and we're all participating in it and so like i st when i started to realize that part the whole system goes against god's will and i'm participating in that system right i enjoy some of the you know the loot right some of the the pirate bounty right we all do for being american just being born american and being you know not homeless or whatever not in complete poverty you you get you know what they people call privilege but it's not like it's like somehow your fault you know like like i said everything if you believe in god there's a plan and so where you are in life whatever it might be is part of that plan right whatever your circumstances are is a part of what you did in the past it's a part of whatever you know if you have built up some you know what call, people call good karma you know whatever it is in a past existence and and you know that doesn't necessarily mean that you're rich successful and famous because that's a trap right that's something that people dream about becoming you, you come in maybe you're you know this is your first life as a human being and you don't really have the ability for abstract thought you suffer 
you know, through a, a difficult life of um, servitude, right, near slave existence, where you're impoverished and, you know, all these things. You see all these people around the world living on, you know, half the population. You're, you know, you have a 50-50 chance of being born into immense poverty where you're living on less than $2 a day. I mean, half the people, 4 billion people, that's their life. They live on less than $2 a day. And so, like, you know, that's the family income. I mean, think about that. And so, you know, people who are just, this is their first life, maybe they were you know, an animal in the last, who knows what they were, right? Like your soul, if you believe in a soul, then you believe in past lives because your soul came from somewhere. And, you know, as you move forward, you start having past life memories and you start being more evolved and you understand this. But like to newbies, like they can be, sometimes they were like a dog or a cow or something in the past life or whatever. And so they're not really capable of understanding the sophistication of a like human experience, right? And understanding the abstract idea of God, they don't have that ability yet. You know, so they come in and they suffer and they're like, if I was only rich, they see rich people, they see powerful people. And maybe in their next life or two lives or whatever, they become that. You know, they work up to becoming financially successful and become a powerful person in the world. And so it's a lower level position. And then they realize, oh, it's, it's worse. Like, you know, like the simplicity of their life before was better than, you know, whatever. And so it isn't like that's, you know, that's people consider that the higher developed people, right? There's people in the truth community that compare themselves to, um, like, or they think about, they're comparing their, you know, where they are now to someone like Trump and Joe Biden. And they view Trump and Joe Biden and all these celebrities, you know, Kate Middleton, Madonna, you know, any of these people, uh, famous and rich and powerful people, as being better than them. Like they're, you know, because in a sense they're, they're, they've moved to something that they themselves aspire to have. Like they wish that they were on that level. And there's people in the truth community like that. And so they think that these people should be better than them in terms of their behavior, right? But if you're, you know, you, if you've had experiences in the past life where you're, you've been rich and powerful and you realize, oh, that's not it. That's not why I'm here. Like, that's you know, part of the journey. You become rich and powerful or celebrity or something like that. And you realize, oh, my God, this isn't really why I'm here. My, your soul realizes it. And then you, you know, live more spiritually based lives where you're not aspiring for, you know, material, whatever it is. You accept whatever you get, you know, in terms of your situation on a material level, but you're, you're there for a different reason. You're evolving spiritually. You're conscious of a interaction or a connection with the divinity within you. You understand that God's there within you, all these things, right? Which religions don't teach. Religions suck. Like, you, you evolve out of your religion. I've talked about this before. Jesus was born a Jew, but he became something else. He became a spiritual person. He didn't become a Christian. Jesus wasn't the first Christian. Jesus evolved spiritually, and then they built this religion around his accomplishments, and it became, uh, you know, a, a, a culty, you know, religious scam, which is what happens, right, to people who are, you know, to spiritual movements, where they, whatever accomplishments they had, are then used to trap other people and it becomes a scam it becomes a you know a culty scam you know i'm witnessing this in the the heartfulness um you know in the heartfulness right with this you know i did Saj mark meditation and this this clown dodgy the current master of the system is turning into a culty thing you know culty scam i'm going to talk about this you know in a little bit but once you go south it just gets worse. Your behavior gets more and more deprived. I'm going to talk about that in terms of, you know, a video, a separate audio for my um, new channel. But if you come from a pure spiritual perspective and you know that God has a plan and there's contingencies for everything that's happening, then it isn't your job, unless it is literally your job, like you're in a position to do something. You know, you're, you're assigned to something in a divine way isn't your job to expose everything or to catch people or to you know like it's it's not your job 
Like the consequences are going to come from whatever it happens. Unless, you know, you're a part of that. Like you're assigned to that on a divine level. Like you, you know, that's your position. But, you know, the, the problem with the truth community is that we're all participating in this system. And you can say, well, I'm not as bad as Joe Biden or as not as bad as Trump or whatever it is, right? I'm not as bad as P. Diddy. But you can't judge yourself based on that. Like, you know, those people are on a lower level, even though they appear in our hierarchy of success, what people consider success. They seem to be in a, you know, the so-called elite. The elite people are in a, a, in a trap of their own making, their own desires, and they're on a much lower vibrational level. They're less mature as a soul. You know, if you've had a past life, I, you know, I had a, I had a long life as a, an Asura king, you know, in India. If you had a past life like that, you know, you've already been there and done that, right? And so you can't judge yourself positively because you're better than Joe Biden or P. Diddy Combs or Trump. You have to hold yourself to a higher standard. And you don't want to get dragged down in being obsessed with them because they are on a lower level, right? Just, you know, it is what it is. But it just demonstrates that we're all part of a system that's going against the will of God. In whatever way that we're participating, even if it's somewhat involuntary just for our own survival, we're using the things like, you know, I know Wi-Fi is bad for me, but I work on the Internet, so it's bad for everybody. And, you know, in the whispers of the white, bright, brighter world messages that come from a you know, divine source in the Sajmark system, it says, yeah, this stuff is evil and it's bad for you, but you have to use it because, you know, it's there. It's part of what life is. And you're subject to it. And once I started thinking about my position here and making videos that way, I stopped stressing about it because I wasn't there to accomplish anything, right? Like the results, you know, one of the things, one of the teachings I received, I received a, a letter back from the third master of the Sajmark system. He said, you do the work and the results are God's. You leave the results to God, you know, the results of your work. And when I really started embracing that, you know, my life got a lot less stressful because I was just doing what was in front of me, whatever it was, right? And just, you know, but I wasn't like this idea that people in the truth community, oh, we got to catch these guys or, you know, we got to expose the bad people. Well, we're all part of it, right? <laughs> you know, it's just different levels of accountability. And, you know, we can minimize our, I mean, we have to engage with the system. There's no way getting out, out from under the system, right? But you can change your orientation. You can you know, have this idea that you're working for God and you're doing what God wants you to do. And you're just using these, you know, oftentimes evil things, whether it be the Internet or whether it be money, whether it be, you know, any of the things that aren't, you know, divine, that aren't based in a divine system. They're, you know, they're demonic because they're anti-divinity. Like if you think about it that way, you're not engaging with the beastly system directly. You're doing what God wants you to do. You're following your soul's path. And you're picking up the tools that you need, you know, at the time, regardless of how demonic they are. You're using the tools that are available to you. And, you know, but it's, there's no outcome. You're not, there's not some kind of an effect you're going to have on the system itself because the system's going to collapse on its own. And that's another thing I realized. Like you can see the system's collapsing whatever that means and how long it takes it doesn't have to be done by you like it's not you know you're not going to we're not going to take the system down and if we did take the system down well you better have a new system for people because people are going to suffer because as bad as this system is it's there for a reason you know it's it's a part of whatever the planet earth is going through and human you know the human journey collective human journey is going through right it's it's what humans are producing right now and there's a reason for it right it's uh, in some odd way it's part of a plan even though it's you know a massive mistake a massive collective mistake right but if you you know think about it that way then it's just not such a big deal like it's not you know whatever's happening in the world it's like oh my that's so unfair you know like <laughs> we got to stop this no you know what you stop what right like it's gonna do what it's gonna do you know, there's it's an autom it's an automatic phase. Like any chance of saving it, any chance of turning the ship around was long ago. Decisions were made, and P. 
people all agreed to them and you know it was it, things to, to whatever it was that would have stopped what we have now those chances have, have already you know that that ship has sailed but anyways let's uh, get into the other stuff here okay so let's get started here kate middleton leaning on her parents for support amid cancer battle they're the real anchors in her life <laughs> you know the the way they put out these remedial um you know predictable storyboard narratives right the royal family is one of the worst at doing this you know this is like the, reading the box of like a an actually like a uh, like a, a barbie doll box or something this is cancer barbie cancer barbie relies on her her husband and her parents for support during her battle with you know like <laughs> it's cancer barbie right everything's just um you know by the book right just all the things you'd see in a like a hallmark um here's this person here kate middleton is speaking out about her cancer diagnosis it has been an incredibly tough couple of months for our entire family but i've had a fantastic medical team who have taken great care of me for which i'm so grateful the princess of wales released an emotional video where she revealed what she's been going through and detailed her ongoing battle in january i under okay so you know just the people who buy into this but it's fewer and fewer people the one thing about the internet you know and you can't catch you know like what i was saying you can't i mean there's not going to be any um you know like uh like a an out and out oh this is we've proven that this is fake and everyone acknowledges it kind of thing right but the majority of people don't believe in the official story anymore it's at least half you know it's probably split down the middle so there they are they're the middletons kate's parents they're her rock you know her husband also she leans on her husband even though he's not there in the video when she's talking about leaning on him and then just all this other stuff here Stephen Colbert regrets fueling Prince Fa William affair rumor after Kate Middleton cancer news. I bet you do. When I made those jokes, uh, that upset some people. And... <laughs> Eat it, Colbert. Even before her diagnosis was revealed. And I can understand that. I mean, a lot of my jokes have upset people in the past. Yeah, because they're not funny. Uh, why don't you apologize for sucking? Okay, um, crack in the circle. Sean Diddy Combs has been untouchable for decades, but now people are out to take him down. So what's changed, right? Because, you know, all these guys, they have something on him. They have something on every celebrity, every person. And, you know, what happened? Like, you know, what was the, what was the catalyst to this thing, right? Um, like, you know, where powerful people are all of a sudden saying, yeah, this guy's a, uh, you know into human trafficking right there's a lot of news about him um inside sean p diddy combs 40 million dollar los angeles home raided by feds uh 400 million 40 million 40 million Trafficking investigation federal law enforcement agents arrived at the rapper's properties with guns drawn as multiple helicopters hovered above yeah okay this is they knew ahead of time I guess he left his kids there to take the rap and he got off on a helicopter, which we'll get into kind of interesting. There's a little clip from Nickelodeon we'll get into in just a moment. So messy, see the mess, messy aftermath at Sean Diddy Combs' homes being raided by the feds. There he is there. Look at they made a mess of it. They just came in and they ripped everything out of drawers and just not very, I mean, you know, Sean Diddy Combs' lawyer slams investigation as a witch hunt, said feds use excessive show of force in ambush. There he is there. Diddy attracted sex trafficking associates by implying access to Prince Harry, other celebs. That's how he got the kids involved in this thing. Um, there's a dude from Nickelodeon. Um, and so, you know, things are turning on Diddy. Let's see if he ends up in jail. Guns found at Sean Diddy Combs, L.A. and Miami properties during federal searches, sources say. And he's on the run. Um, so, you know, Homeland Security. So, one of my viewers sent me this. This is obviously going around. So, this is that crappy All Out show. And 
a Nickelodeon, and which has been very pervy and weird over the years. Uh, has all these, you know, I've covered it, and, you know, I'm sure there's much more I don't know about. But it starts off with this kid pouring sour milk and curd, which I was actually talking about in terms of cheese making and some other video of this morning's voiceover. <laughs> actually, it's this video I get to it in a bit. I talk about in terms of rennet. Um, but somebody sent me this afterwards, so that kind of is interesting. And so I'm going to edit this out but a little bit. I'm going to cut it up because Nickelodeon sucks at, um, you know, it's um, whatever, uh, Viacom. They sucks at copywriting. But it starts off with this. They pour the stuff on. They can't wake this kid up. That's the, you know, that's the whole premise of this bit. But having this, you know, white liquid poured on this kid's face and head is, you know, I mean, it's got sexual connotation to start off with. Yeah. I always ask myself, what would P. Diddy do? So he's attributing, and this is what they say about Jesus, right? What would Jesus do? So they're attributing Christ-like, you know, whatever, to P. Diddy, right? And then they go talk to him, and he suggests this. Tell you what, take this toy helicopter, put it down his pants. All right, we'll do it. We'll do it. Come on, Diddy. So what an odd suggestion, and he, you know, I think he escaped on a helicopter, and there was helicopters surrounding his house, but then there's this imagery of this kid covered in white goo, and then pulling this kid's pants up and sticking a toy helicopter in them, right? Didn't work. He's still asleep. <laughs> Try this. So there's symbolism here with him handing him a remote control. To the helicopter. Yeah, so the video obviously didn't age well, but it wasn't great when they shot it. It's creepy, and you know, like, what's he doing here? Like, what, <laughs> what are you doing with your life, B. Diddy? Christina Ricci had no bond with infant daughter Cleopatra while filming Yellow Jacks. She didn't know me. <laughs> There's a lot there. Um, she named her daughter Cleopatra. Yellow Jackets is a bizarre show. I, you know, I watched maybe a minute of it. And I've seen trailers for it. I think there's cannibalism possibly involved, but it's twisted kind of weird stuff. Um, but why in the world would she name her kid Cleopatra and I mean just weird right and all of it um, that kid's you know in for it um, when I'm away I try to take my I guess is her son his name Cleopatra and her son Freddie okay so she has Freddie and Cleopatra um, whatever right just <laughs> Some legal scholars push for Justice Sonia My Sotomayor to retire because it says here, the cost of her failing to be replaced by a Democratic president with a Democratic Senate would be catastrophic. And so um, she has huge health problems. And um, remember, she had some sort of a health collapse. I'd love to see Sotomayor retire. I would love to trade her for a 50-year-old justice. You liberals are very compassionate to your... <laughs> um, but anyway, she's having some kind of health crisis, which I've talked about, covered before. Baltimore Key Bridge collapses after ship crashes into it. So this, um, there's a ship here, like a... You can see the cargo ship. And the cargo ship is, um, is uh, right here and it's the cargo ship was driving through it and it hit the top of the bridge and then the whole thing came down um i don't know if there are any cars on it when it happened but there aren't any cars on it now baltimore sasha baron cohen denies rebel wilson's uh, demonstrably false claims about inappropriate behavior on brothers grimsby set which is a very bizarre movie where um he ends up in the vagina of an elephant and it 
is then mating with another elephant. So that's, you know, where a lot of his stuff kind of ends up here. But she said that when I first came to Hollywood, people were like, I have no a-hole policy means like, hey, I don't work with a-holes. And I was like, oh, yeah, I mean, that sounds sensible, but logical. But then it really sunk in because I worked with a massive a-hole. And yeah, now I definitely have no a-hole policy. The a-hole in question was Sasha Baron Cohn. Every day he's like, just go naked. It'll be funny. Remember in Borat when I did this naked scene, it was hilarious. And the last day I thought I obviously won the argument. He got a body double to go naked scene. And then he said, um, he wanted her to stick your finger up my poop. And look at, I'll just put down my pants and just stick your finger on my poop. It would really be funny bit. And she didn't do it. So, um, you know. <laughs> so this was, um, one of my viewers sent me this. Trump campaign ad ever. Here are the first 15 promises he has made if he is reelected. First, he promises that he will carry out the largest domestic deportation operation in history. He will also ask for the death sentence for anyone convicted of human trafficking. He will close the Department of Education and return all education standards to the states to decide. He will put prayer back into school and he will criminalize any race-based advantage programs. He will end the Affordable Care Act. He will ban gender-affirming care for adults and children and he will ban any federal dollars from going towards gender-affirming care, which means anyone with government-provided health care will no longer be able to access gender-affirming care except for Viagra and Cialis. Those will still be available. He will propose a constitutional amendment that gives a term limit to Congress. He will deploy the Department of Justice to investigate the Biden crime family and any of his adversaries or political rivals. He will immediately pardon all of the January 6ers and he will create a task force to investigate anyone who arrested, charged, or imprisoned a January 6er. He will increase the penalties for underage criminal offenders, strengthen immunity for police officers, and deploy the National Guard to patrol woke cities. On day one, he will reassess our participation in NATO and says that every European country needs to pay the United States for protection. He will also restore the wonderful travel ban for Muslims coming to America. He will build freedom cities. This is 10 new cities built on federal land. He will award them to areas with the best development proposals, and he will prioritize moving young families to these freedom cities. He will kill all e-vehicles and e-vehicle legislation, seeking to replace that with the development of a flying car. He believes that we could create a car that vertically takes off. He will remove all of the limits on American natural gas exports and drill baby drill for oil domestically. He will impose a tariff of up to 60% on Chinese imports. He will extend the 2017 tax cuts and drop the corporate tax rate from 21% to 15%. He will push Congress to pass legislation that would give every American the right to concealed carry anywhere at any time. And he will revoke any gun restrictions or legislation that seeks to inhibit people's ability to own guns that's been passed in the last several years. He will demand that Europe pay back all the money we gave Ukraine, and then he will use all of that money to recruit for the American military. And he will take billions and billions of dollars from private university endowments by taxing, fining, and suing the universities. He specifically names Harvard in this one. And then he will use that money to create the American Academy. It is a free online college that will be free of wokeness that he will force employers to recognize as a bachelor's degree equivalent. Liberal accident. So, um, you know, I know that there are going to be a lot of people who agree with a lot of those things. Some of those things sound good. Some of them are, you just know, right? But, you know, for Trumpers and Republicans, that's like great stuff because he's pandering to them. He's not going to deliver on almost any of those things, if any of them at all. Some of those things, he doesn't have power as president to do, right? I mean, he says all these things, but these are things he's just pandering to the, you know, the right wing, the far right wing. It's classic Trump. He's, he's, he can't do those things, right? Those things aren't going to happen. And if he, you know, if you look at what he did in his first term, mostly he was playing defense and it'd be even worse if he was president he'll be under attack all the time and like you know all these things he's saying they're just this is just like a flim flam man spinning and a lot of those things would be you know unconstitutional so apparently this is modern art like how do you get people to do this And like, how are you watching this and not... Doesn't it make you anxious? Like, it's kind of, you know... I 
mean, just... You know, who, get, who had this idea and, you know, how, how do they get money to do this, right? Like, who funds this and how do you get, you know, a museum or whatever to participate? It's not art. It's, you know, it's, it's a horror show. And they're obviously pumping oxygen in there somehow. You know. Like, what? You know. <laughs> what are we doing here, people? So this dude, it looks like he's wearing clown makeup. He's walking around Portland with a bat. Uh, maybe not Portland. And he goes up to a car and he's like, all right, you know, I don't know if he's trying to get money. And the dude gets out and is like, I'm not having any of that. And he walks off. Um, I guess it says not Portland. Or maybe it is Portland, I don't know. Um, my wife was just telling me this, I don't know if she sent this to me or somebody else did. I think somebody else did. But 90% of cheese is made with a GMO ren rennet. You know, when you're making cheese, cheese making is, you know, I, I made various cheeses, mostly soft cheeses, but a variety of cheeses. And what you do is you add, you get the, ch the milk up to a certain temperature and you add some kind of an acid. And the acid, and you can see this, you know, if you get old milk and you heat it up, sometimes it'll separate. And you'll see like there's a, a yellowish liquid, which is called whey, right? Curds and whey, right? The, you know, little Miss Muffet sat in a corner eating her curds and whey. That's, you know, it's like a, almost like a form of yogurt. Um, they call it yogurt curd in India. And so rennet is an acid that separates the curds from the whey and there's these di different kinds of rennet you can get vegetarian rennet there's different kinds you can get back when um i made cheeses my family and i were mostly vegetarians and so um you know you can get these types of acids but apparently pfizer has made a rennet that's gmo and i don't know i just heard about like last week i think somebody else sent that but 90 percent of the cheese cheeses are being made by a gmo Pfizer read it and you know Pfizer um, speaking of despicable here's Madame X Ration Day she spits I think on an audience member and then she throws her liquid on them and they're all jumping up and cheering like my god this we've been touched by God and then she skips around the stage just like expiration dates do and um, this was hilarious tell thousands of Cleveland school children to ride to school on public transportation, there's only one thing you can expect. Confusion. Confusion. When you suddenly tell thousands of Cleveland school children to ride public transportation, there's only one thing you can expect. Confusion. Right. <laughs> That kid's great. <laughs> he just grabbed all of the guy's thing. And this is the guy's reaction here. This is classic. This is must be in the, the 80s or 90s or something. Why don't you get on the bus, okay? That, that ain't our bus. When you suddenly... <laughs> Why don't you get on the bus? That ain't our bus, meaning we're not confused. We know which bus to get on. Um, apparently they use public transportation because there's a lot of busing happening in Cleveland. You know, in the 80s. Country singer Morgan Wade is still adjusting to her body after double mastectomy. I think she's the liberal one that was mad at some of the other country singers, or she... I'm not sure that's the same person. But anyways, this falls under the cancer of... the, the category of turbo cancer. Um, she was pushing for some of this stuff, I think. And then the same person sent me this. I thought my bloody stool during pregnancy was hemorrhoids. It was stage 3 colorectal cancer um, and she's 32 years old and just the turbo cancers are starting to mount up like that's the new thing that everyone's sending me of course people are still dying of heart failure and things like that so I mean it's all you know it's 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 on right okay so well, let's wrap this one up here only spirituality will save this world it's bar mano definitely pointing for the apocalypse and the ascension everyone have a blessed day and be grateful